Okay, so now it's time to address the lead screw and the lead screw nut. Um, if you watched, I don't know, was it last video or when I initially took this thing apart, I showed how bad this lead screw is. I mean, it's severely worn. You know, it did most of the work from here to here. And I'll bring the camera in closer so you can see how thin this Acme thread is in here. Oh, and then this is the nut I got out. I'll bring you in guys closer, but I mean, there's hardly any threads in there. I'm not sure how that table even moved at this point. So it is really shot, really worn out. I was going to replace it with the standard Acme threaded, you know, rod and get a chunk of bearing bronze and make a, a new nut. But uh, Brian Block over there, you guys know Brian, he's got the big GNL. He mentioned, why not just go ahead and, you know, bite the bullet and go with a ball screw and a ball screw nut. And I'm like, well, yeah, I didn't think about that, but that makes sense. So, uh, you know, I don't have to address this issue in 30 years. You think that the saddle, probably that and the table itself, what, 1,500 at maybe, you know, 2,000 pounds alone just sitting there on the ways and then you slap on you know a couple angle plates and you know a big piece of work say another thousand pounds 1500 pounds so i mean you could be moving you know 3500 pounds two tons back and forth constantly i mean you know that's what wears this thing out so going with the ball screw the ball screw nut i mean we're not going to have that issue. It's going to be nice and smooth and, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about backlash, you know, excessive wear, anything like that. So that's what I've done. I hit up McMaster car and I got this <laughs> gorgeous one and a half inch diameter ball screw. It's four feet long. So, which is what this length is here. Now this stuff is like $200 a foot. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it didn't make sense to buy like a six foot section and then mill off, or I shouldn't say mill off, turn off uh, two feet of the Acme thread, you know, to get the diameter down to make it look like this one here. So I think what we're going to do is we'll just cut off the ends on this one and we'll make them made up to, this lead screw right here, hold on, this one keeps wanting to roll. And I thought I had a home run because when I pulled the dimensions for this diameter, it's just under this diameter here. So I was like, sweet, this will fit in the original housing. But the specs on McMaster car, no fault of them, but they don't include the uh, ball tunnel here. So it is wider, so it won't fit. So we won't be able to put it in the way I wanted to. We'll have to turn it around and mount it this way, but it still shouldn't be a, you know, that much of a problem. So I think what we're gonna do now is go ahead and basically make an adapter that'll bolt onto the back of the housing and that will bolt onto this uh, ball screw nut. So let me uh, move the camera in and show you just how bad the damage is or how much worn these two parts are going handheld. So let me see if I can hold this steady. So this is what the Acme thread should look like. See how nice and thick it is there. And then we come over here where all the work was done. And I mean, just look how thin that is. I could probably almost shave if I could get that close enough to my face. <laughs> I mean, it's razor sharp. And let me see, let me try to hold it. So even though it looks like grooves in there, uh, there's nothing in there. Try to hold the light so it'll look good. And this is here, this is about the only part that actually had a little bit of thread left, but. Yeah, I mean. It is war slap out. Over here at the back of the saddle, so that's where the original ball screw nut was captive. 
And like I said, this diameter here, I thought it was gonna be a home run, so it slips right in. <laughs> Except for those uh, tunnels there that are sitting external. So <clears throat> what we'll have to do is mount it this way. So I said, not a big issue, because you think most of the time the table is getting pulled that way. So I think we'll be fine. We'll just lose a couple inches of travel back on this end, but we'll be all right. So we'll just make up an adapter that'll bolt to this and then this will bolt to the adapter. So I'm gonna grab a chunk of uh, Mm, what about four and a half five inch diameter piece of uh, steel and meet me over the lathe got a piece of mystery steel chucked up it is four and a half inch in diameter this face here is four and three eighths so it'll work out perfect just skim this down and then we'll be good idea where we're at should be close I think four four two there's a last pass here stuff machines pretty good not sure what it is Surface finish ain't the greatest, so uh, maybe a uh, 10 series steel, I don't know. All right. Well, now that we've got the diameter we need, I'll break this edge and then I'm going to take this out, take it to the bandsaw, we'll get it cut and then we'll chuck it back up and clean that face and then we got to punch a hole in it. Let the bandsaw do its thing. And of course, when it's bandsaw time, our normal ritual, it's chaos time. <laughs> All right, buddy. We'll get some play time in. He hadn't been happy because I've been on the lathe. He keeps dropping it at my feet. All right, bud. We're going to have a good day here. Say it's Saturday. We're in the shop working. Better give me some time. Gotta drop it. Turn the jaws around, trying to grip it the other way. But unfortunately, by the time the jaws pulled in to get the outer diameter, I didn't have enough room in the center here, so we're going to have to run it this way. Just got to be mindful of the spinning jaws. And we're just going to step drill her. 
The hole obviously has to be bigger than uh, one and a half inches because that's the diameter of that ball screw. Um, got some Morse taper number fours. I think I can take it out to about uh, one and 25, 30 seconds, I think is uh, the largest I got before it jumps to like two inch. So that's just under one and three quarters of an inch. So that'll give about, you know, a hundred thousandths clearance all the way around. So we should be fine. So let's punch this hole. The grind is very good on this one. Just cutting on one flute, one edge there. Yeah, let me go touch this up. So, somebody got a new football today, and he is so excited. Aren't you, buddy? Ready? <laughs> New football to him is like I think catnip to cats, boy. He loves this. He loves these. Uh, what are these? Kong air dog toys. You gonna let me get any work done today, or you just gonna drive me crazy with your new football, huh? Huh? So I'm gonna drive you crazy, Daddy. Yes, what I do. Woohoo! You drop it, I'll throw it now. Come on. Got you guys set up over here at my Sterling drill grinder. So I'm not sure where I got this drill from. It may have been in a eBay purchase. It may have been viewer gift i may have got it from matt or a couple other guys that sell a bunch of tool and i don't remember but uh i was just assuming that the edges were good but obviously they weren't so we'll put a fresh grind on her hopefully i got you in a good spot let me get set up here i've already dressed the wheel i've already adjusted it for the drill size Come in and slowly kiss it. And if you can see down here at the bottom where I'm adjusting it slowly. And you just turn the thumb screw in a little bit, it raises the drill. And we just come back and forth doing 118 degree. So 59 obviously on each flute. This gets it a little more accurate than hand grinding. Nothing wrong with hand grinding. But if this was hand ground previously, as you saw in the lathe, it only had one side cutting. So it was a smidgen off.
All right, I'll keep at it. See this any better now. <clears throat> Got the rotary table set up on the mill table so we can cut those bolt hole patterns that we need this one here on the original nut this is an odd bolt hole pattern it's like 2.883 so half of that's like 1.441 and a fifth so get these done and we'll countersink since I'm going to use some cap screws so that will hold the adapter into the original holes and then we can move out and then of course space off 90 degrees and then we can do the one that's going in there and that's a three and a half inch bolt hole pattern so I mean that's a nominal size so I'm gonna buzz these out I'll probably put you on you know four times speed or something so this is just you know easy drilling but uh, figured some guys might want to watch it Okay, so now the time has come. Obviously, I couldn't drill all the way through in this hole and this one and that one because I would have hit my jaws. I couldn't put enough spacer material in here to lift it up so I could make sure I could clear it because then I wouldn't have enough grip on the outer diameter. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up on that hole that gauge pin right there lock the quill we are going to loosen the table up and 
now we are going to rotate the table and get off of our jaws. A little trick there. See if I keep going, I can get off of this jaw and that one. I can get those two holes and we can drill all the way through and tap that one. So, little trick. You guys may already know it, but if not, there you go. Put that one in your book. Well, there's our adapter plate all wrapped up. I think it came out pretty good. So, smaller holes, countersunk. This is going to mount to the back of the saddle. And obviously the ones that are out farther that are threaded, they're going to hold the new ball screw nut. So, it should work out just fine. I'm going to uh, throw a coat of paint on it. And while that's drying tonight, I'll see you guys back tomorrow and we'll get it assembled. All right, it's the next day, paint is dry. I just put it on, looks pretty good. Hope you guys can see that from there. I'm not sure if there's a little bit of glare off the painted surface. Now, I'm not knocking McMaster car, I'm just knocking, I guess Thompson who built this. This was just in a bag, no instructions, anything about it, any insulation tips, nothing, so I'm not sure if there's a, a requirement to have these uh, ball tubes in any orientation or if it doesn't matter. The picture showed them like this, so uh, I'll get it as close as I can, I guess. You know, I don't know if it needs to be on the bottom or the side or 12 o'clock, but uh, I guess we can just stick her on like that and I'll get it pretty close. So. And after I get this installed, I think this is probably a good place to end the video because it's been kind of a short week now that spring is here. It means everything is growing outside, so I've got to spend like a day and a half mowing acreage, weed eating, spraying weed killer, trimming limbs, and all that good stuff. So hadn't had that much time in the shop this week. But I appreciate you guys watching and hanging out with me. And we're getting close to getting this thing put back together. So that is exciting. And I also want to mention thanks for commenting on my question about the oil grooves on the underside of the table. Something I didn't think about that a few guys mentioned. I agree that I am not going to extend them. I'm going to keep them as is because, let me grab the camera, so if the table moves past the uh, ways of the saddle, then obviously oil is just going to pour out. It's no longer going to be captive in there, and also it exposes it to the introduction of dirt and grime and junk. So. I am going to uh, leave it as is for now. All right, there you go. One adapter plate made. Hope you enjoyed the little bit of lathe turning and got to see the sharpening on the uh, Sterling drill grinder. Now Sterling is still in business, so you can pick one up if you want, but they're pretty pricey. So the uh, secondary market is still pretty strong for them. But man, they sure come in handy, especially on those larger size drills, as you saw. You can just knock it out and it gets the edges just right. So anyways, with that, it's going to be a wrap. Next week's video, we are going to tackle the lead screw, taking the old lead screw, cutting it up, mating it to the new lead screw. So that should be fun. Get this together. And then, hey, we are in the downhill. I can get the table on top and we can kind of fire this thing up and test it. And like I said, after that, we'll get the tailstock on. Did discover one issue that we're going to have with the new lead screw concerning the tail stock, but uh, it won't be too big of a deal. It's just uh, you know something we'll have to address. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video, guys. Take care. Bye.